often wonder why men are satisfied to live all their lives between brick walls and thinking of nothing but money and the so-called recreations of so-called society when there is so much enjoyment in the country. James Roosevelt. That same fall of 1880, there was another marriage in the extended Roosevelt clan. 56-year-old James Roosevelt belonged to the Hudson River branch. His summer home was Springwood, a 900-acre estate high above the river's eastern shore near the village of Hyde Park. Springwood is an absolutely beautiful place. It overlooks the river, acres and acres of woods and fields with a ramshackle old house, very comfortable. They were not showy people, the Roosevelt, so it's a very comfortable place. There, James Roosevelt lived the life of an English country gentleman, his money made in railroads and investments. His servants and tenant farmers all called him Mr. James. He was an Episcopalian and a conservative, reform-minded Democrat who took both his religious and civic duties seriously. But he had been a widower for four years. His late wife, a distant cousin, had died of heart disease. Their only child, a son nicknamed Rosie, had married an heiress to the Astor fortune and moved away. In his loneliness, Mr. James had once suggested marriage to Theodore Roosevelt's sister, Bammy. She gently turned him away, then invited him to dinner to meet a friend of hers, Miss Sarah Delano. He talked to her the whole time, Theodore's mother said. He never took his eyes off her. Sarah Delano was 25, less than half of James's age, tall and regal, a member of a French Huguenot clan that had flourished in America even longer than the Roosevelts had. Her father, Warren Delano, who had made himself a millionaire in the China trade, had the true patriarchal spirit, Sarah remembered, and supervised every detail of family life within the big walled estate he'd built at Newburgh, 25 miles downriver from Hyde Park. No Democrat could ever work for him, Warren Delano once explained, because while not all Democrats were horse thieves, it had been his experience that all horse thieves were Democrats. His five daughters attracted what he called an avalanche of suitors, and he was startled when Mr. James asked for Sarah's hand. He was a business associate and his rough contemporary after all, and he was a Democrat. Before he gave his approval, Mr. Delano had to be convinced that Sarah was, as he said, earnestly, seriously, entirely in love. She was. James Roosevelt and Sarah Delano were married on October 7, 1880, just six months after they met. A guest remembered that several women wept at the thought that such a lovely girl should marry an old man. On January 30, 1882, at Springwood, they had a son. Sarah and her baby very nearly did not make it. Labor had stretched on for more than 24 hours. Sarah was given too much chloroform. The doctor had to breathe life into her boy. Seven weeks later, at St. James Episcopal Chapel in Hyde Park, the baby was christened. Theodore Roosevelt's mother, Mitty, came to visit and said that the child was such a fair, sweet, cunning, little bright darling baby. Sarah looked so very lovely with him, like a Madonna and infant. He was named Franklin Delano Roosevelt. <laughs> 